What's up guys, CBS here. And today I just want to share with you guys a tutorial, the drawing app which I've been used for quite a while now, which is Procreate. You might think that, what's it for, right? Can we just use AI instead? Or no need to paint? Well, it's unfortunate to already have this mindset, but hopefully I can judge your perspective by sharing the process along the way and the journey behind it. If in the future, AI prompts to be part of our daily process, it's always better to have an artistic skill that knows how to use these AI tools instead of just being an AI prompter. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first is to make sure that the version you are using is up to date. You can check what version you are using by tapping on the Procreate text on the upper left corner of your screen. If you are using an older version, go to the App Store and searching for the app will let you update it to the latest version and you are good to go. If there are instances that you have worked in the future that got corrupted due to some unforeseen reasons, you can recover them as well by tapping the Start Gallery Recovery. But as for me, I have been using this app for quite a while now and I never did it happen that I had a corrupted file. To access your canvas list, just tap on the plus icon on the upper right corner of your screen. There are some preset canvas settings on the app like the usual, but if you wanted to have some additional custom canvas settings, you can create your own here. It will have a list of all the previous settings you have made. You can rename and arrange this list as well according to your preference from your most priority to list or vice versa. One helpful feature on this is that you can create stacks of your work as well by tapping on each of the canvas and simply choose stack. This will allow you to manage and arrange your works similar on how a typical gallery works which is very efficient. This is very helpful for me since I tend to organize stuff in accordance to how I prioritize works by clients or personal works. Make sure to use this feature since it will be very helpful in the long run, especially when you get a lot of works already along the way. Creating canvas is very simple as well. Just go to the plus icon and it will bring you to the canvas settings option. Here you can set the dimensions and DPI settings for your canvas. One thing to note is that the maximum layers are previewed as it display the number of layers allowed on the canvas settings that you have made. This is very helpful since Procreate lets you know the amount of possible work it can handle based on the size of the canvas, avoiding future crashes and corrupted works. You can see here that it updates the maximum layer count whenever you adjust the width and the height of your canvas, which is very helpful. This can be an adjustment for some people who are used to Photoshop and other paint apps that don't have this feature since you really need to be efficient on how you are using your layers. I had problems on this during the early stages when I'm new to Procreate since I have to merge a lot of layers along the way just to meet the allowable number of layers, but eventually I got used to it and it doesn't bother me anymore at all. On the time lapse settings, make sure you set this at the beginning of your work. If you use the default canvas of Procreate, I believe the speed paint are on a lower quality settings. So I definitely recommend to create your own canvas size and input the settings to 2K or 4K. The canvas properties just let you create a default background color for your specific canvas. You can select to turn on and off the background or a hidden option as well to set the background hidden or not by default. Now we are inside the workspace of the app. Let's get into the different section in here and see what are some of the important settings to pay attention to. We will mainly focus for now on the wrench icon, the upper left portion of our screen which contains all of the action settings. So first, on the add sections which are pretty much straightforward where you can add a file whether it is a PSD or Procreate file. You can insert in here as well as JPEG pictures, take a photo, add text, cut, copy, and paste to your work, and that's it. Next will be the canvas, which you can adjust by tapping the crop and resize. Note that when you resize your canvas, it will give you an info on the updated number of layers possible in real time based on the adjusted canvas you plan on doing instead of you know going back to the canvas info section. For the drawing guide, you can choose a number of different options below, but for the most part, I just use the mirror symmetry option. This is very helpful if you need to draw something which are in perfect symmetry, especially on a frontal view. I use this mostly on character templates, VTuber drawings, and weapon designs that usually need consistent symmetry drawing. If you will need some asymmetrical design aspects on some portion, just turn it off by tapping on the layer you are using, then turn off the drawing assist. You can also flip your canvas horizontally and vertically by going to the canvas option and tap the two options when needed. I always recommend doing this so you can check some proportional issues on your work over the long run. This is important since when you simply draw on a specific view for a long time, your eyes basically get used to the issues on your drawing. Another useful tool built into the Procreate app is the reference tool, which you can access as well on the canvas tab. 
Use any image as part of your guide while drawing. This is also helpful by using your own canvas space on a smaller scale so you can see it on a different view rather than a zoomed in version. Same as the flip canvas technique, this also gives you a fresh view of your work on a different size similar to a thumbnail so you can see how the shapes and values look in a zoom out scale which is pretty much how you see things through social media and art sites. So make sure to keep this feature on good use. Last feature we're gonna talk about on the canvas is the canvas section, which is pretty much straightforward. You can view here useful information such as dimension, duration of your work, available layers, and etc. For the layers, it's pretty basic, but there are some features that you might have some trouble finding. So first to access the layers, you can locate it on the upper right of your screen beside the color palette. You can access the filter and transparent option by tapping the small letter N on the right side of your layer beside the checkbox. This will give you the option of choosing a filter style for the specific layer you are working on. To create groups of layers, you can simply swipe to the right the specific number of layers you want to be grouped and a group option will appear on the upper right section of your layers tab. Simply tap this and you can organize and rename the layers on your workspace. This is very helpful since most of the time I organize layers that are correlated to one another. Now let's talk about the brush section. As you can see, there are a lot of unique default brushes in Procreate. But majority of the time, I only use two which are the studio pen and the soft brush. You can add the smudge tool if you consider it as a brush maybe but those three only. You can customize these settings by tapping the brush and it will bring you to the brush studio. From here, I adjust some very few settings as well. On this brush settings, one of the very important ones is the stabilization. I usually input around 15-25% to on this one. I suggest not to bump this one too much since the stroke will get too smooth but it removes the natural stroke feel to it. It also slows down the fast strokes that you may want to do when you're creating hatches so make sure to use this as low as possible to not remove the natural pen stroke similar when you draw manually on paper. Now normally you would do all of your work on a single canvas right? But since Procreate has its layer limits, I tend to create the post processing or other work extensions when needed on a separate canvas. I do this mostly when there are there is a very detailed work like this one you're seeing on the screen, maybe a VTuber or a keyframe artwork that has multiple characters since merging of layers might be problematic for those specific works. Note that when you do this, I recommend to purge the video speed paint on your duplicated canvas to minimize the size of your file, which I will talk more in detail on a separate video. On this new canvas, you can see that the time duration work stroke counts etc are now updated based on the previous one since it is newly created. Finally, you can add text into your work by going to the wrench icon and on the add tab, you can tap on the add text to add on your work. There are several default fonts in here as well and the typical align option from left, right or center as well as changing color fonts and width to your preference. So that's it for this tutorial and I highly recommend Procreate if you're wondering what drawing app you guys wanted to use especially if you are new to apple os it took a long while before i decided to create a tutorial for procreate since i wanted to make sure that i have a good amount of time working with the app uh, for my works from start to finish before i share my workflow uh, from it i may not be able to share all of the other intricate details of the app but from all the elements i discussed in this video it pretty much covers everything from my workflow from start to finish. Another thing is that you probably noticed that I didn't discuss on the multiple tap gestures on this app. That's because I usually don't use it pretty much similar to all the other apps I used before as well. But feel free to use them since I know Procreate has those cool tap options that you can use. I might use it in the future but who knows when I do I might create a video of it as well and to teach you guys maybe. So that's it, hope you find this video uh, informative and see you guys on the next one.